Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Breaking Brews Podcast, a podcast focused on the business side of beer and what's driving today's thriving craft beer industry. Whether you're one of the thousands of people making craft beer what it is today, or just love great beer and want to know more about it, this show is here to cover everything from sales, marketing, branding, culture, and much, much more. The Breaking Brews Podcast delivers real-life scenarios and experiences from industry professionals that will help your beer knowledge evolve. To tap into more great beer content, visit BreakingBrews.com today. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. Let's get this session started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Breaking Brews podcast. As always, I am your host, Jason Sircone, and you are tuned in to session 26 of the Word of the Poured. If you haven't done so already, jump back in the archives. There are 25 other episodes for you to consume. You can subscribe to the Breaking Brews podcast. Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify has what you're looking for. You can also listen to the show, stay up to date on show notes, and any announcements about the Breaking Brews podcast over at breakingbrews.com slash podcast. If you like what you hear, jump over to iTunes, drop a rating, drop a review, let me know how I'm doing with the show, and help the Breaking Brews podcast find the ears of more thirsty beer enthusiasts and thirsty beer professionals just like you. Okay, if you were tuned in last week, you heard a great conversation that I got to have with Kaylee Losey, who is the co-founder and social media manager at Presidential Brewing in Portage, Michigan. Kaylee and I discussed a lot of the organic Facebook marketing strategies that you can take advantage of if you're running a brewery, if you're running a bar, if you're running a restaurant, if you're running a business in general and looking to improve upon your social media habits. Today, the conversation about Facebook continues, and I'll be joined by none other than Aaron Williams of Monday Night Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia. Today, Aaron and I are going to expand upon what you can do with Facebook and how you can get the most for your efforts. Again, session 25, if you haven't listened already, jump back in the archives after you get done today and check that out. You'll learn all about the organic approaches you should implement. Today, we'll be discussing paid marketing campaigns. Aaron gives some great background on how he got started with Monday Night Brewing, how he has implemented paid strategies into the Monday Night Brewing approach. They are marketing across three different states where their beer is distributed, and they're also looking to keep a strong, tight focus on what they can do within their own community to drive traffic to their tap room. So there's lots of great information for you to unpack today. Facebook paid advertising can be a little bit tricky. There's no denying that. The good news is there are a lot of resources out there for you to take advantage of. This podcast being one of them, as you're going to get to hear from two people who have experience using paid Facebook ad campaigns. But Facebook itself is a great resource. Who and they're, Their people are always there to help you. They want to make sure that you're getting the most from the platform. They're looking to create the best user experience possible. And that's not just from the end user, that's from the businesses that are using the platform to promote their businesses as well. They want to make sure that everybody is getting the best return on investment. And today in the show, we're going to talk about how Facebook gets involved to make sure that you get the most from your campaign. So on today's episode, you're going to learn all about the paid strategies, how you can get started, the best way to construct an ad, some of the do's, some of the don'ts. We covered a lot of great information. And this will just be part one of the paid marketing campaign efforts that you can get from Facebook. Session 30, a few weeks down the road, is also going to tackle this subject with some additional content from what you'll hear today. So lots to look forward to today, lots to look forward to in the future right here on the Breaking Brews podcast. So let's get this show started. This is session 26 of the Breaking Brews podcast covering paid Facebook marketing strategies with Aaron Williams of Monday Night Brewing. All right, boys and girls, we are back on the Breaking Brews podcast, and I am joined via Skype by Mr. Aaron Williams of Monday Night Brewing in Hotlanta, Georgia. What's up, my friend? It's great, but I do have to correct you right off the bat. We don't call it Hotlanta. No. No, that's actually one of our beers that we make is 
don't call it Hotlanta. So okay, well I already, yeah. I already screwed this whole operation. That's up. okay. That's all right. You know what? It's you're up in you're up in Pennsylvania. It's you know one of those. We, we, we'd use it as an educational tool more than anything else. My cousin has <laughs> has affectionately called me a Yankee many times. Exactly. That's so, what you are. So you're good here. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear that like a badge of honor today. That's okay. So, so am I. Right. before we get started, Aaron has joined the show today to talk about Facebook advertising and implementing some good paid Facebook marketing strategies. If you haven't done so already, go back to the previous session, session 25, and listen to Kaylee Losey of Presidential Brewing drop some knowledge about organic posting. So we're putting together a nice little series of Facebook marketing strategies for all of our friends in the brewing industry, all the bars and restaurants, and businesses as a whole. As you pick up this podcast, hopefully there's some knowledge dropped within these episodes that are going to help you build your Facebook presence. Now, I do want to throw this disclaimer slash PSA out there. Aaron was kind enough to send me some beer from Monday Night Brewing. If anybody out there would like to come on the Breaking Brews podcast and send me some beer beforehand... I am all for that. I will never say no. I've got my glass filled with some All Y'all Pale Ale from the Monday Night Brewing lineup. Aaron, you want to tell us a little bit about this beer? Yeah, like we said before the show, uh, super crushable pale ale. Uh, It's got some mosaic in there. It's got some Amarillo. But like you said, it's it's light ABV, but I think it's about 4.5% right now. And so it's just – I call it our lawnmower beer. And it's just it's because, like I said, it's a super crushable. It's got a little bit of that hop profile in there, so it's it's got a little bit more body. And when it's 95 degrees in Atlanta all the time, like I said, that is my lawnmower beer that I go to, and it's it's I love it. Um, it's a seasonal for us. We were not making it for this summer, but I'm trying to rally the brewers and tell us to make some more. So hopefully they'll listen to me. They never do, but that's okay. <laughs> if you still got my address, feel free to send it my way. I've got a lawn to mow too. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, Aaron, let's get started. Give us some background on yourself. Tell us how you earned your spot with Monday Night Brewing and give us the story leading up to that day. Yeah, sure. I mean, my background mainly is in journalism. I went to Ithaca College in upstate New York for that. And uh, I actually worked in radio and television for about 20 years, both in front and behind the camera. But I've been really into craft beer since I was in college. I worked at a brew pub when I was there and it kind of got me into it. Really started to enjoy it. And when I was in radio, I founded a local beer podcast and uh, really got to know most of the uh, breweries across the Atlanta metro area and uh, got to know the Monday Night Crew specifically because they were right down the street from our radio station. And they're super a uh, bunch of great guys. Uh, about a year and a half ago, they started expanding and uh, they needed someone in their marketing department. And frankly, I just needed a change. I was pretty tired of working in radio. And really, after the most rigorous hiring process I've ever been through, they had over 400 people apply. I went through about five different rounds of interviews, had to take a personality test. I took all this other stuff, and uh, literally it was the hardest interview I've ever ever done. But fortunately, I got selected, and it's been a phenomenal place to work. Uh, We're we're growing pretty rapidly, but uh, we're growing pretty smartly, and uh, the managers and our owners are, are super cool to work with. And the beer's great, too. So were you you were one of 400, or were there more that were hired? Uh, no, I was one of 400 actually. Wow, I believe. That's huge. So that's what I've been told. So yeah, I, I, like I said, I mean, it's, 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 it, it was a pretty big honor for me to, to, to be that. So yeah. well, congratulations. Thank you. Doing Thank good you. stuff. So as we know, social media is one of the most predominant methods of marketing in today's world and having a Facebook presence and social media presence as a whole is extremely critical to how a brand builds its visibility in the market. What are some of the ways that you guys have effectively implemented social media marketing strategies into the Monday Night brand? Yeah, well, you know, of course, uh, you've got 7,500 breweries across the United States, so you really have to kind of raise your hand and say, hey, I'm here. You need to try my brand. So marketing in general has become more and more important over the past several years. And uh, social media marketing has been really a key component of that because really it's been cost effective for us and it allows us to really drill down to what our target audience is. So, for example, uh, over the past year or so, we've had we've launched a brand awareness campaign across the states where we distribute, which is uh, Alabama, Georgia and Tennessee. And uh, so far, we've reached over two million impressions with that, uh, with almost a uh, a minuscule cost uh, over uh, less than three cents uh, per view. So, or for, uh, per result. So that's kind of a, it's been a really nice campaign for us. Um, our tap room revenue has increased at least in the double digits since we've started doing more of a brand awareness campaign and focus more on our tap rooms as well. 
And the, really the cool thing about it is that we've created some in-market demand for a lot of our beers, especially our small batch. In fact, sometimes our, our sales reps kind of get mad at me because I'll post something on social media that's not coming out for another week or so. And then their, their bottle shops and bars call them like within minutes of me posting demanding that beer and they're like hold off on it i got some other orders to take care of so yeah it's it's been fun but uh, but you know i mean it's it's part of a larger campaign for us that entails public relations we do taproom marketing and a, a lot more of that but uh, really social media marketing is one of the key components of what we do i know we're going to talk a lot about the paid aspect of facebook today but I want to get your vibe and your thoughts on the organic side of things because, again, we want to stress the importance of both. So what, sure. are, what is your approach to organic posting on Facebook? I come from a television and radio background. So what I usually think of is I think organic posting is kind of our content. So paid advertising, and that's what's paying the bills. That's what's driving people to our, our tap room. But what organic posting for us is it basically creates or builds that brand and builds – what we want to convey as our lifestyle and what we want to convey as what we are as a company. So, um, you know, you can't always hammer people with events and commercials for beer. You've got to give them something interesting that they'll stop and look at. So that again, kind of is our content brand. So we use videos. We try and use pictures of, of, you know, the tap room, our brew staff out in the road, um, just some great shots of our beer, uh, you know, some user generated content, those types of things doesn't necessarily have to be professional, but it should be interesting and something that the users can kind of like and engage with and hopefully share. You mentioned your sales reps already getting contacts from their, from their bottle shops, from their bars. So clearly it's working and you're getting mm -hmm. information out there. As far as the organic side of it goes, I mean, do you see this creating a lot of good engagement and conversation on your page? Yeah, it does. You know, and it, of course, it's, sometimes it's a crapshoot with organic content. You know, there's certain types of things that we found work pretty well for our audience. New beer shots really kind of are the biggest draw for a lot of them. And then sometimes some people in our brewing uh, house and and, uh, and that type of content seems to generate some good some good interaction and some good uh, good discussion with uh, our our audience. But I mean, when it comes to our organic posts, you know, we want to try and move people forward in our kind of the list. So. I was a former athlete. You couldn't tell me looking at me. But what I always like to say is that we've got kind of four different buckets that we put people in. Uh, we have a bench warmer bucket, which is basically people who have no idea who we are and they don't care. There's a practice squad, which is people who may drink craft beer, but they don't necessarily know who we are. JV people are people who have an awareness of us and maybe kind of work, you know, and, and, are, and are known as and are craft beer fans. And then the varsity are kind of our top 1% of the people that we really like to interact and work with, and they're our biggest fans. So what we like to do is we like to, with our organic posts and pretty much a lot of our brand awareness marketing is to move people along that line. So get people, sometimes the bench warm, but that's difficult, but basically getting people from the practice squad to the JV and moving the JV people over to the varsity. So the more people that you can get to moving up that ladder into into the one percent, you know, interacting with your brand positively, you're having more fans, you're having more fun, and the more advocates that you can have, and then the more people are going to be putting money in your bank account. So that's really the bottom line with our or organic content is to create some content that's fun, that's interesting, it's interactive, but kind of makes people think that we're a cool company we want to hang out with, basically. That is a really neat approach to it, and the fact that you 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 identified your audience and then gotten them into these different levels of everywhere you want to go. I, I love, I really like that approach. I, I'm, and it's been great. Uh, yeah. One of our co-founders, Jonathan Baker, uh, actually his father spent a career doing surveys. Mm -hmm. So we kind of had a nice in-house resource and we're able to kind of do some in-house surveys and some internal marketing kind of surveys and results. So we were able to break some of this down and have a little bit more of a coherent strategy. So we were lucky to have that. That's fantastic. And, and, and as you just mentioned, Aaron, as we talked about in the last episode, having that organic strategy in tune and running alongside a paid strategy can do nothing but boost your results and boost your success. And as Aaron said, it can get people from that JV squad moved over to the varsity and from the bench warmers on up. So that's, that's like I said, that's a really cool approach and a great way to look at it. So it really simplifies things for all you guys out there listening. So Aaron, yeah, and I think, Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go uh, ahead. Yeah. And I think, you know, just doing the, doing that, uh, kind of exercise puts you in a mindset to recognize, okay, what are we going to, who are we targeting with this, with this campaign or who are we targeting with this post? Are we targeting the 
varsity guy who's a super beer nerd. He loves, you know, all of our crazy Brett funky stuff. Or are we just trying to target the practice squad and the JV guys who like to have a crushable pale ale on Friday afternoon? You know, you, you kind of want to make sure that you're, you're filling all of those gaps. And, of course, it depends on who your target market is, too. But that's what we like to do. We, we have a breadth of, uh, of beer varieties uh, and beer brands that we have. So we kind of try and focus on the super craft beer nerds, but also the people who, again, who are just – I hate to say it like this, basic beer drinkers, people who just, you know, are into craft beer, but they're not super into craft beer. And that's okay. I mean, it, there, there's everybody out there. It doesn't matter what level you fall into or what bucket, quote unquote, you fall into. As long as you love beer, you can gravitate towards a brand no matter what level you're at. So it's, Amen it's, to that. It's, and, yeah. it's, and it's great that you guys are putting an approach out there that does speak to the entire audience because mm -hmm. there are some that will only speak to one segment. And in yes. doing that, they'll cut out the other segment inadvertently. And well, well exactly, in exactly. And if you, you know, and, and a lot of the times we have we have a core brand of five beers that we have, and 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 literally, it's the five beers that we brew the most, we we send out the most. But if you're a craft beer nerd like I am, you know, I'm always psyched for the small batch releases and the super small stuff that we're sure. doing and the taproom only stuff. But, you know, you kind of have to stop and think about it. You're like, okay, well, 90% of the people that are interacting with our brand are interacting with our five core beers. So, you know, I literally have to kind of make an effort for me to stop what I'm excited about, but make sure that other people, you know, that I'm, that I'm grabbing the attention of everybody in our market and who is, who is interacting with our brand or who could potentially be are interacting with their brand, making sure that they're represented as well. Well, let's dive into the paid side of things and mm -hmm. talk about your paid initiatives. So let's start with a very basic question. How often do you guys run paid advertisements on Facebook? Uh, we have uh, paid advertisements running 24-7. So okay. at least one, if not two or three. I usually have two to three campaigns running. Depending on how many things are going on, I've had up to five. But once you okay. get into that kind of number, you're really kind of diluting things. So I don't like to do that that much. <laughs> Do you have those ads all running at different audiences? Are you split testing? And we probably should talk about what split testing is. And mm -hmm. are yeah, you... exactly. Um, we're doing we're doing that. Uh, and we're doing things like again uh, the brand awareness campaign that I mentioned before. That's going twenty four seven across the board. Uh, but I'm also doing uh, things like you know posting and promoting events. I think one of the easiest and one of the best things to do when it comes to paid advertising is to promote your events and beer releases. That's a super easy way to get started with Facebook advertising. And then we are doing some some A/B testing and some some split testing as well, talking about different beer brands and those types of things. One of the one of the issues and one of the things that we have, and I think everyone kind of struggles with, is generating the right content. You know, I like to get a lot of video content and I like to make it look right. And sometimes it can be difficult to do that when you're on a super tight budget sure. of you know almost zero. <laughs> so <laughs> you know you've got to really kind of find creative ways to do it. Right. And so a lot of people don't have the uh the resources to do a big huge in-depth split test and, and those types of things and and we're certainly one of those too so for all of our listeners out there i, I mean i'm sure there's some people that are just getting started with advertising on facebook or are, are looking for the best way to move forward so let, let's talk about each individual detail here let's start with split testing tell us what that's mm -hmm. about and what it entails and how you guys have implemented using that strategy sure so the tldr version of it is basically you're running a same campaign you're, 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 and you're testing one aspect of it. So if, say, you're running a split test on a beer release and you want to see if someone's going to re react with a really cool shot of somebody drinking a beer versus just one of the sexy beer shots that you've got in store. So what you would do is you would basically run same market, same copy. Everything would be the same except for those two pictures or those two videos. And then you would run that for a period of time Facebook will split test them and then they'll see which one is getting the best result at the lowest cost. And that's a really good way, especially when you're first starting out with doing some sort of campaigns and you're kind of, it's not the very first thing you would do, but once you're kind of maybe in it and you kind of know enough to get it wrong, do a couple of split tests and see what your audience reacts to. If it's, you know, if the audience may let just like a static beer shot, or they may like, you know, pictures of your tap room do that type of thing and see what works. But, you know, you need to make sure that you're only convert, you're only doing one different aspect of the ad. Everything stays the same except for that one thing. If that makes sense. Absolutely. So when do you feel is the right time for a brand to start advertising on Facebook? Is it 
in the early going, should they wait till they have an established following or should they just hit it right out of the gates? Right out of the gates. You know, like I said earlier, there are 7,500 breweries across the country. If you're a brewer or a brew pub, I mean, you've got competition everywhere. And yeah. if you don't start marketing as soon as you're able, then you're going to be kind of behind the track. At the very least, something like, especially if you first open, what I would suggest to do is to create just a brand awareness campaign in your neighborhood or wherever the market is that you serve saying, hey, we're here, we're awesome, we exist, come see our thing and just run that for awareness so people are aware of that brand, they know who you are and hopefully they'll start kind of familiarizing themselves with your, your area. Once you start getting a little more established, again, gain that audience as much as you possibly can and then start advertising some specific things like what you're doing for events and what you're doing for beer releases and those types of things. Would you recommend for a new brand that's just opening their establishment to do a very tight radius, like maybe like 10 mile radius to get their advertising started? Yeah, I think so. And of course it depends on where your market is and where you live. Um, but I would, I would start pretty tight and totally go for your local neighborhood. You know, we distribute across three States. So of course our, our footprint's a lot bigger, right. but our tap room specifically I only radius around five miles from where our tap room is. And I do that, I do that within five, five or even 10 miles just because the metro Atlanta area is so big. But if I was in you know, a, a suburban town or if I was in some other area, that, w that would be a lot tighter. But yeah, it, especially if you want tap room traffic, it makes no sense to advertise to someone 30, 35 miles away that you've got a special tonight because who's going to go? Who's going to drive 30 miles to get there? Yeah, you know, I mean, Make it as tight as possible. Yeah. So the neighborhood knows and then the neighborhood can hopefully spread out and create word and then kind of go from there. Aaron, you had mentioned the brand awareness ad for a, a, a brewery just opening up or a business just opening up. There are a lot of different options on Facebook in regards to how you can target your ads. Brand awareness is one. Traffic mm -hmm. is another if you want to direct traffic to your website or to an event page. What are some of the metrics that you have used and had success with that Facebook offers you? Yeah, I really like, especially for a brand awareness campaign, is to look for the impressions um, because that tells me who who is seeing my ad and who is kind of reacting to it. There's a thing called it's uh, I believe it's called a recall, and if you're and if you have brand recall, that's a win in my book. So uh, with the campaign that I mentioned earlier, that's ongoing, um, I've got over two million impressions of it, and the ad recall is up there as well. We had a video made about a year ago about the brewing process and about a Monday night brewing in general. I've used that and I've used smaller bits and pieces of that in my brand awareness campaign. And that has really kind of seemed to work for us. So, you know, if you're trying to create a general awareness of what you're doing, that's a good way to start. If you don't necessarily have a budget for someone to create a video, you know, you can use pictures, you can, you can use a lot of different things like that. Um, or you can even, if you've got a local college or something or someone who you know who's into film, beg them to help for a few hundred bucks and a, couple, and a few cases of beer, you know, that type of thing. And uh, try to get something started with that just to make sure that you're raising your awareness and raising your brand that way. One of the nice aspects that Facebook offers is that you can take images and they will turn them into a video. It's just a, mm -hmm. it's a few step process. So to piggyback on what Aaron was saying in regards to creating a video, if you don't have the budget or have someone that can put together a very <laughs> well done, heavily produced video, you can accomplish your goals just by utilizing what Facebook offers you and get something out. Yeah. There. And that's, and really that's been the great thing. Oh, really over the past year or so, Facebook has really made their ad creation a tool, a lot more robust. I mean, let's face it. They want your money. So they want to make it as easy as possible for you to make a successful video so you can spend more money with them. Yeah. So doing these types and, – and, and I, I don't use it because I, I'm I, – I don't want to brag, but it's like I kind of know Adobe, so I, that's what I use for most of my video creation. But if someone who's not – doesn't have the time or the wherewithal to, to do it, yeah, it's super easy to just do – it's really only – takes you about – five or six minutes, yep. as long as you've got the elements in place, you're good to go. And, and, and it makes a, a really nice professional video out of it. And, and to speak to that point about Facebook, pay attention because they often travel to various markets and they will do seminars where they will teach you how to do Facebook advertising better. And yeah. They, they came to Pittsburgh last year and that's last year at 2018, depending on when you're picking up this podcast, obviously. <laughs> But yeah, they were here in they, Pittsburgh, and they had, it was a full-day seminar teaching you the various aspects of 
setting up advertisements, setting up boosted posts, utilizing groups, so on and so forth. But the, the end goal, and you can tell just in the way these these classes were presented is they want you to stay on Facebook with everything you do, which makes complete sense. Yeah. And if, even if, even if they don't have one of those seminars, once you create a business account within Facebook, they will often come out to reach out to you or you can reach out to them and they will have somebody help you walk you through uh, developing a, uh, an ad campaign. Yep. So, you know, doing the keywords, right. Doing all those type of things, they will help you. And I've actually, I actually used the, those guys when I was first starting out and they're, they were a big help in trying to just, there's a lot of weird stuff in there that if you don't understand it, it's super confusing. So it's a good way to kind of get started with that. Absolutely. Now, for those that don't know, Facebook owns Instagram, purchased it yes. a few years ago. And you've probably seen some subtle changes over the years since that purchase took place where Instagram mirrors Facebook in a lot of ways and vice versa. And in that, you can also advertise from your Facebook feed or your Facebook ad manager. You can also tie that to Instagram. Have you guys done that at Monday Night Brewing, Aaron? Uh, yes, we have. Well, usually most of our campaigns I tie to Instagram. One of the things, though, that you really kind of have to do, and it's a few extra steps, is to make sure that your image or videos are cropped correctly because you're looking yeah. at different as aspect ratios for right. both uh, Facebook and Instagram. Instagram likes being a square. Facebook, you can have pretty much any any uh, type of size, but uh, make sure that again, what you're putting on Instagram makes sense for Instagram. If it's a good video, if it's a, if it's a more story driven thing, it's not necessarily a visual driven thing. It wouldn't necessarily be a great fit on Instagram, but if you've got some great pictures and great visuals, again, cropped correctly, then I think it's a real, it's a super easy way to kind of, to add to your, to your uh, campaign. And it also pops up in stories as well, which is another really cool thing that, uh, that's, that we use as well. Have you guys done just specifically Instagram targeted advertising? We have. Um, honestly, I don't do it a lot just because it's – you might as well. You know, if you've got Facebook, you've got Instagram, you might as well just put them all in the same bucket. But we do do some things. So we've done some giveaways and some, you know, things like that specifically on Instagram. And those work pretty well. You know, you just got to make sure – yeah, you've got to kind of have a different audience and a different idea of what – goes well with Instagram than you do with Facebook. For us, most of the time, again, it's just as easy for me to do it on both. One of the things that, and this is this is going to be more for general conversation sakes, I, I just started tinkering with Instagram TV. So for all mm -hmm. of our listeners out there, you can go over to Breaking Brews Co. Check out some of the Instagram TV feeds that I've been putting out there. Have you guys gotten into Instagram TV yet? Honestly, we haven't. I, I would like to, and that's something that I really, that's on my agenda. Uh, but I, again, I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm a department of one. So <laughs> a lot of the time, I hear you, I'm man. I'm there too. The day, yeah. I'm just keeping up with the day to day. So, um, hopefully if we, if I ever get a lull in, in, in the day to day, uh, stuff, uh, again, I'd like to play with it a little more, but I haven't had a chance. So here, here's a call out to anybody in Pittsburgh or anybody in Atlanta for unpaid internships. I'm searching. Aaron is searching. We need We're your all help. searching for interns. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I, I can't offer pay. I can't offer college credit, but it's a fun work environment, as Michael yeah. Scott would say on the office. See, we 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 get uh, we get college credit, and if you're 21, you get beer too, which is a which is a plus. Oh, so. Okay, so your internship <laughs> completely blows mine out of the water. Definitely. Sorry about that. I have got beer. I've, I've got beer that Aaron sent me, so it's like a half oh, back ass Monday night brewing internship here at Breaking Brews. That's right. We just sold the hell out of that. <laughs> All right, before we move on, I got to break open the space lettuce. Oh, good call. You just won a gold medal at the Can Can Awards with a uh, space lettuce, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, tell us all about it. So, I am pouring the space lettuce double IPA from Monday yeah, night. Yeah. Um, super dank double IPA uh, for us, but you know it's a little bit on those bitter ends, thanks to the thanks to the hop profile that we've got on that, and then uh, I think it's seven point five. Seven six. Let me check with. The I may camera. I may be low on that. Eight point one. See there you go. Eight point one. But uh, you know it's probably one of our, it's probably one of our most requested beers that we have. It's and uh, we've just started brewing it a lot more this year. So people in our market will start seeing a lot more of it. But uh, it's a dangerously drinkable double IPA. I'll say uh, it's got a little bit of that kind of hop profile that you want out of a classic West Coast. A little bit of that dank notes, but it still has some of that citrusy notes that you get from a classic uh, Northeast IPA, but yep. 
I just think it's got a great malt, malt profile. I just think it's a very well balanced beer. I was, um, I was, yeah, I was just gonna say. I mean, the hops are really jumping out at me, but the, it's mm-hmm. not overly aggressive. I mean, personally, yeah. like, I, I never mind the hop aggress aggression. If it, it if it rips my enamel off the teeth, I'm happy. But, I'm right there with you. Yeah, yeah, but this is this is stellar. I, I, yeah, I just thank you. I, I just this, those are one of those beers I get a pint of. I don't even think about it, and it's like a third of the way. You know, it's like there's only a two or three ounces left. I'm like, oh, I just drank this. Okay, <laughs> so it's yeah. it's a bad habit I need to break. I have a feeling that's going to happen throughout the show. <laughs> there well, you let, go. Let's continue. Let's jump back into Facebook. So, do you ever just boost your posts from the organic side? Honestly, I don't that often. Here's why. I think that I think creating custom content for ads is a little bit more robust and a lot easier to do. And I think it's more effective because when you're boosting something, you're trying to get people to to do a direct action, um, like actually buy something from you. And sometimes when you're boosting a post, what you're getting basically is likes and maybe some reaction. And for me, the juice isn't necessarily worth the squeeze when it comes to that. If you've got big news, like again, like if you win a GABF gold medal or we're building a new facility, for example, uh, we're building a new brew pub in Birmingham, Alabama, that could be worth it. But I think sometimes, uh, you know, just to boost a post because you liked it and you want to get some more likes and reactions from it. I, again, ask yourself if the juice is worth the squeeze. And most of the time it's not because you're really not getting any direct monetary be- benefit from that. How about an event? Would you ever boost an event? I lo- love boosting events. I do, okay. every, I do every single event. I think that that's, they're super cost effective and they're great for a couple of reasons. Um, one, again, like I said, it's cost effective. So think about if you have an event, if you're having, say, a beer release. If you spend $50 boosting that event, what, you need two extra people to show up f- to make it worth it? You know, I right. mean, it's, it's, it's super cost effective that way. And then the more times that you, you boost your ads for events – you still create top of mind awareness in people in your market and in your neighborhood. So if you're consistently saying, hey, we've got this coming out. Hey, we've got this musician coming. Hey, we've got this special event coming out. And you're constantly there and you're constantly in your feed. More and more people will be able to take notice and remember that that, that you guys are there and will think about you more. Even if they don't necessarily go to that event, again, you're creating that awareness. So with marketing, a lot of times we're always looking for the most cost-effective approach and trying to save the most money. But the reality of the situation is, is you have to approach it with some sort of budget. You, you, you really aren't going to help yourself trying to build your brand and build your visibility without investing something into making it grow and making people take notice of who you are. Mm-hmm. So in that, with Facebook being a very powerful platform in which the, your investment should be directed, I mean, I've talked to lots of businesses that have pulled all of their budgets from print ads and billboards and radio, television, et cetera, et cetera, directed it all towards Facebook, which is a very 2019 approach. I think that's something everyone it is take a know, look at. But. And as a former radio and television person myself, it's one of the reasons why I don't work in radio anymore, <laughs> um, because that's happening all across the board. That's got to be a hard sell. Yeah, it, told, it, it really is. And, and, that, and the thing is, is that you know, when you're talking about uh, traditional media, basically, from my experience in radio, you're buying a 30 second ad campaign. You're spending, depending on your market, you're spending anywhere from two to four to five hundred dollars a week, and they can't really tell you exactly who's listening to it. Right. But with Facebook, at an exponentially smaller amount of money, you can hit people. It's very scary how Big Brother you can hit with people on social media, particularly Facebook, you can drill down as far as you need to go. And it's, it's like I said, it's a little scary at times, but it's great for marketers. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, that's always been one of the big, you know, what, what is my return on investments mm-hmm. in, in regards to print ads or billboards? Yeah, you can judge thoroughfare and how many people drive by on a daily basis, but at the same time, how many people are paying attention, how, how yeah. quick quickly is that being absorbed but with this you're actually getting tangible data put in front of you and we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get into tracking your results with advertising but as a brand of any size how how should they go about constructing their ad budget for Facebook I've read I've read a few things about this and I think uh, this kind of makes sense for us and again you can take it or leave it for whatever the advice is but for us we're spending about 20 to 25 percent of our budget on branding and awareness, um, just general campaigns, letting people know that we exist and where we are. 
50 to 60 percent of, of our budget is driving conversion. So that's, again, getting people to come to our tap rooms, getting people to buy our beer, though, getting people to come to our events, those types of things, things that are going to actually have a direct result and a direct impact on our bottom line. The rest of that is basically on testing. So, you know, just play with it a little bit, different ads, do that split testing that we're talking about, trying some different campaigns, see what works for you and your market. So that's what we go on generally, and, and it can fluctuate for whatever you are. But I, I think that, you know, if you're going to start an ad campaign, if you're going to start a marketing campaign, you got to start with a budget and an idea of what you're, what you're, what you're willing to spend and what you're willing, what you want to see as a result of that spend. Because even though Facebook and social media are pretty cost effective, if you're not careful, it can get really spendy really quick. So, you, you know, you kind of have to be make sure that you're within those budget parameters. Are you looking for a better way to attack your social media efforts? Do you need help developing a plan that will help you maximize your initiatives? Do you feel like you're doing nothing but wasting time on sites like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then it's time for a jumpstart. Check out the Breaking Brews Social Media Jumpstart and discover an easy way for us to join forces and take your business to new levels. From a complete analysis of your current presence to an intensive strategy session designed to develop and execute your plan of attack, the Social Media Jumpstart is a great way to build a foundation that will lead to long-term results. To learn more, visit www.breakingbrews.com slash jumpstart today. Yeah, and I think when when you don't have a sound strategy of what you're actually or who you're actually looking at, that's where it can get very very costly, and and, yes. and, and that investment can go out the window with no real return. So I, that's actually a perfect segue into what I wanted to go into next with you, Aaron. Walk us through creating an effective ad. How how do you create the ads content, and how do you actually put it on Facebook so it goes live? Sure. Um, you know, and then really the nice thing is, is that um, you, you almost can follow along with me if you're on a, on a Facebook business account. First of all, you need to get a Facebook business account. That's first and foremost, because then it makes you easier to, to create ads. You need to go to an ad account. You need to, and then once you do that, you go to your ads account um, in the business account and create a campaign. And then you figure out what your call to action is. There's a bunch of different things that, that Facebook will ask you to do really read that one closely. They've got little circles, little eye next to whatever box it is. Look very closely at what the description is before you decide which one you want to do. Do you want conversions? Do you want foot traffic? Do you want people to download your app? They've got so many different things that you, that you can convert with. Engagements, those types of things. Uh, most of the time you want basically conversions. And so you figure out what your call to action is and then kind of go from there. So say we're creating an, an ad for an event at uh, your workplace. You go there, you create engagement, then you scroll down, make sure that you click on have people react or get people to, uh, to respond to an event that you're doing because there's three different keys that are there. So in each one of these processes, you've got to read really carefully and just not skip ahead. It's not something you do at 7 o'clock at night after you've had a few beers. It's something you like kind of do with a cup of coffee and just kind of concentrate because it's super easy to lose track. And I, I do it all the time. So once you figure out your call to action, you'll go to the next step and you'll create basically your ad campaign. And the first thing you'll do is you'll create your audience, which is your demographic that you're looking for. So depending on what you want to promote, you can make a custom audience or you can make a lookalike audience. Now, if you don't have a lot of followers on Facebook, you probably want to make a custom audience. And that's basically what you're thinking of when you're creating an ad. It's, it's I want to target craft beer people. I want to target people who like live music, food, you know, whatever their interests are. That's what a custom audience is. If you've got a pretty decent following on Facebook, though, all of that demographic is in there and you can create what's called a lookalike audience. And a lookalike audience will take who, who your, uh, who your uh, uh, Facebook likes and, and followers are and create a profile of those based on who they are. And then you can expand it within like 1%, 2%, 3%, 3 of what that is. So it basically takes everybody in your defined geographical area that's not a follower of yours but is similar to everyone who's following you and can create an audience based off of that. And that's a pretty powerful tool because – you're getting people who probably would interact with you if they knew about you. So that's something that I really kind of uh, I, I like to do a lot with mine. And also to also make sure that you create 
start it with 21 and over, or they're going to reject your ad if you're doing right. alcohol. So the demographic starts between 18 and 65, I think is what it is. You want to make sure you adjust that to 21. And then I usually bump it up, up a little bit to around 50 to 55, because for us, we've found that's those that's the range of people that basically interact with our, with our Facebook page uh, the most often. And then once you figure out who that audience is, then you make a geo, you find the geographic reach. So that's what we talked about before. So you can put in your address and say, okay, I want to target everyone within a one mile radius of it. Or hey, you know, we've got a big football game. The Super Bowl was at, you know, was in Atlanta uh, this this past year, and so I want to target everyone within five miles that is visiting Atlanta and is within the Mercedes Benz Stadium to tell people to come to our brewery. So we can do stuff like that. You can really go down deep. You know, if you want to be diabolical, you can go to your biggest rivals brewery, set their address, and say, hey, I want to target everyone within a mile radius of them to say, hey, we're a short Uber ride away. Come see us. Depends on how nice you want to be to the other breweries. You know, you can try and you can try and poach their business. But uh, <laughs> but you can do but you can do anything with, with, with target with target with your target geographic audience. And again, it depends. If you're doing an event, go low. If you're doing a brand awareness, go high. And then kind of work what you what with that what you will. Set your budget, whatever that is, and then you create your ad. The ad, Facebook likes visual, so too much text and they're either going to reject it or they're going to downplay it so hardly anybody sees it. When you so, say text, you mean on the image, right? On the image, exactly. Yeah. So if you have a poster, you know, if you've got – so for example, we had I, ha, I had a picture that had um, a picture of our barrel room and then there was a big logo that said Garage Club on it. Well, they, re- they rejected that one because the image had too much text on it because the, the, the Garage Club logo took up most of the, the screen. So I shrank that down to where it was only a tiny portion of it, and then it was okay. Because so if you have like maybe a brochure, or if you've got a big list or a big poster that's got a bunch of text on it, they're going to reject that, or they're either going to make or or make it. They're not going to to show it to many people. So yeah, it's the impression. So yes, exactly. I, and and not to cut uh, cut you off because I, I I love where this is going, but what 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 do you feel is the reason for that? Have you really looked? De- I mean, I think I have a pretty good idea in my mind about why they do that. What what have you discovered in your travels about why I, they? I mean, you know, ads like trying that? to get into Facebook's brain is something that uh, you know people <laughs> that make a lot more money than I do. At I love to try so, though; it's fun. Yes, that's that's that is the biggest thing. And then once you figure it out, they'll change it. Yep. So you know. <laughs> That's, that's the biggest thing. I, I personally think that it's easier for them to police or to maintain the standards on regular text. So if you have a lot of text in your in your um, in your image, it kind of you're trying to game the system, so to speak. And I don't think they want you doing that. Right. And I, you know, and I think that they want to keep the medium as visual as possible as well. So that, that's my theory. That's how I. I yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> the overall overarching theme of Facebook is creating the best user experience possible, and everything. There you go. Yeah. Everything that we that they do is built for that. So you play within their rules, you're going to succeed. And I think that putting just nice sound imagery out there with good copy versus trying to put that copy on the image creates a better user experience. Exactly. And speaking of user experience, really, you know, one of the one of the things that, that I like to do before I put an image out for, for a paid advertisement, or even if I just do an organic one, is that I will have somebody else look at it. You know, I want to think to myself, I'm like, is this a cool image? Is this something that I'll stop on? If I say yes, then maybe I'll get a couple of people from work saying, hey, do you like this image? Do you not like this image? Yada, yada, yada. Right. Because, you know, if you take an okay picture – and put it up there just because you want something put up there, it's it doesn't work as well if you take another five minutes, you know, maybe shift the lighting around a little bit, make it a better picture that people will actually stop on. So right. it's it's hard. I mean, you know, sometimes you just don't have time. But um, yeah. But you know, kind of taking taking the time to figure out what a good image is and what a, or what a good video is, as opposed to just I just got to click something to get it done. I, I, again, I think it yields results in the long term. But yeah, it's, uh, just to go ahead and finish what I was doing before, uh, it's you're, then you're, once you test your ad, once you create your ad, you've got the visuals, you're ready to go, you submit it, and really they'll approve it, deny it, they'll tell you why they deny it, and then you're good to go. You know, it usually takes about a half a day or so for Facebook to approve your ad, and then, like I said, you're good to go. Run it for a couple of days to see how it works. 
And what you're looking for is basically the cost per click or the cost per impression. And you want to keep that as far under a dollar as possible. Single digits are the best. Depends on what campaign you're using. But you really want to keep that in the no more than 20, 30 cent range. Once you're getting up to the 40, 50, 60 cent range, you're kind of pushing it. And then once you get over a dollar per, per action, that's, that's not good. My boss hates that. So <laughs> I try not to make, I try not to do that. So, so, so when, but once you, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I was going to say, when you see that, what adjustments do you typically make? Do you tear the ad down or do you try to tweak it to make it more cost effective? So it gets to that proper price range. Yeah, I'll do a little bit of both. You know, it just depends on the timing and the nature of the ad. If it's just something that I don't think is going to work, I'll just pull the ad. But if it's something that I think, okay, maybe that picture wasn't the best or maybe my copy kind of sucked, let's try this and let's see if it works and see if I can get those results back down. And then I'll try it for a few more days. And if, I do, if it's just not working, then, I'm, then I'll just pull it. I mean, sometimes it's just not something people are interested in. And there's nothing you can do about it. Right. But you'll never know unless you put something out there. I think that's exactly. the, the biggest thing. Exactly. The biggest yeah. lesson here is you have to get started with it in some way, shape, yeah. or form. Get started with it, and again, be consistent with it, and you'll start learning some tricks and trades, and you'll start learning your audience and what they like. You know, the more you can do, and even just try it, like I said, I mean, just try it with 20 bucks, you know, just just mm -hmm. try ad campaigns with that, something small, and you will notice a difference, you know, and I think that that's, that's, that's the big thing. You don't need five-figure budget to do this kind of stuff. You can start off with yeah. 10, 20 bucks and, and see how it goes for you. And, and, and part of me believes that Facebook understands that, I mean, obviously your big companies have million dollar budgets that they're going to pour into this and that's where their big revenue is generated from, but they can gain so much from the small businesses that have a smaller budget, but are using it effectively, which is why they are so adamant about making sure that we're getting the most from it. So they go do these seminars, they reach out to you and walk you through how to implement good ads. So you're not yeah. alone in the battle. Exactly. You know, I mean, look at how many businesses are there are in your town. I mean, you know, there's hundreds, if not thousands of businesses in your town. Pretty much all of them could be using some sort of social media. And if they're doing it on a, on a $20 a week budget or, or a $50 a week budget, you're getting all of those times everyone across the country. You know, that's that's a big chunk of change right there. So they really want you to to, to do it right and not get frustrated with the process. Do you use the business manager app? Or do you just use your desktop to track this in regards to seeing how your ads are performing? It depends. You know, I, I use about, I use the desktop about ninety percent of the time just because I have my laptop with me pretty much whenever. But if it's if it's something like if I'm at an event and I'm interested, I, I use the app and the app works pretty well. I will use that if I'm if I'm out and about. But um, but most of the time I'm in my office and I'm looking at it through my through my laptop. Yeah, what I like about the app is that when I wake up in the morning, it's already sent me an alert. Of, of how yep. it performed the last day, and I'm, I'm, I'm nerdy like that, so I can just open my phone right when I wake up and, and see how things did and see where I need to make adjustments. So I Yeah, mine sends it to me at 6, 6 in the morning, and I just that, that bugs me when I'm on vacation. But other than that, it is good. It is. <laughs> well, I usually have my phone on silent, and I'll wake up around 7.30 in there. It's, it's waiting for me every time. So There you to go. Each, there you to go. each their own. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So – We've mentioned a couple times that Facebook is there to help you. This isn't one of those money grab situations where they're just trying to yank your budget away from you and screw you over. They really want you to be successful with this. So they are at your disposal. When you set up ads, after that ad completes, they are going to reach out to you typically to help you make adjustments and point you in the right direction. But Aaron, outside of our conversation today and what Facebook can offer you, what other resources can listeners refer to to learn more about advertising on this platform? Yeah, a lot of the uh, the bigger uh, um, platform or social pl programming uh, websites are, are really good and have really good information, even if you don't pay for their services. Um, Hootsuite has some really good um, uh, ideas. Also, Sprout Social is another one. And then also HubSpot. Uh, so a lot of these big content uh, generators have like really good information. And if, honestly, I mean, if you're looking to do something and you just can't find an answer for it, 99% of the times, if you Google it, you can figure it out. It's, it's the old, if you can't figure out how to do something, just look on YouTube and they'll, and, and there's something they'll do it, you know? So yeah. it's, it's very similar to that, but really, I mean, Facebook is, is, is a great, great resource, you know, and I'm not one to kind of, to, to show for them, but you know, even their stuff that's online, it's not no seminars or anything like that. They've got a lot of good information on that for you. And um, one thing that I really recommend that people do is to look on Facebook and Instagram and follow accounts that you like. 
you know, they don't necessarily have to be ones that are local, but just if you're a small brewery and you just really love what some national brand is doing, just kind of follow them and see what, what some of the bigger brands are doing uh, with a much larger budget. And frankly, I don't want to say steal it, but uh, make take their ideas and make them your own. Let's put it that way. They're doing something that makes inter- that makes sense for you. Use it. You know, if you look and see like how their consistency is and what they're doing, and if you like kind of what their photography and what their video is, you can really gain a lot of inspiration from that by looking at your at uh, your colleagues and competition in the industry. Yeah, I mean that's you know the the soul of this podcast is to create information for everybody in the industry, regardless of where you're located. Mm-hmm. So looking at what people are doing in other markets, it, it can easily be applied in your market. You just may have to make a few adjustments here and there to stay within the parameters of the law or to just make it work for your audience. But sure. ultimately, content you're hearing here is something that you're going to be able to apply no matter where you are. It's the same as following an account on the other side of the country that's doing something that you really dig. And you can, exactly. and you can put it to work for you. And if it helps your brand, it's just making us all better. So I would really doubt that the brand on the other side of the country would be upset that you no, followed mean, in their footsteps. Is, that's right. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. You know, and I'll admit, you know, we're, we're huge fans of Allagash and what they're doing on social media. You know, that's one of the, the, the sites that we follow a lot. You know, there's a lot of them out there. They're really doing some great work. And even if, you know, these bigger brands have an actual marketing team and a, maybe even a photographer on staff and a video team, you know, you can see what they do and kind of scale it down and, and make it work for what you, what your parameters are, too. Absolutely. We're going to get ready to wind down here, Aaron. Before we do, what is one piece of advice you could offer anyone that's listening to this show who is about to post their very first ad on Facebook? Get somebody to proof your copy. <laughs> proof I, I your do. copy. Make sure everything works correctly. Show somebody who maybe is an English major or something like that. Make sure that it's it's good, it's on point. Make sure somebody sees it. Can we you just know, make that a general rule of thumb about anything you're going to post on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, please, I, everybody? I <laughs> totally agree. I, I am guilty of it several, and I've done it many, many more times than I care to mention. But, you know, I really make sure that I try to put all of my organic and paid posts through some sort of a filter I have a colleague who fortunately was a journalism major and she worked in the field too. So I, I'll slack her what I, what I've got. And I'm like, can you just take a look at this real quick? And she's like, yeah, you're good. And then, you know, we'll go from there, but uh, just have somebody look it over. It can, it can, it makes it so much easier. And then you'll have plausible deniability if something screws up too. So yeah, you can blame the other person. No, I mean, it, it, it's crazy how, I mean, here's a, here's an example, and this is this is outside of Facebook marketing. It was on an Instagram story. My girlfriend sent it to me, and even I miss it because I'm usually a complete OCD nut over grammar and, and correctness and you name it. She yeah. she sent me this, and she said, and, and she said, find the error. And I always, you know, it's like that's as soon as that's that's the equivalent of somebody playing words with friends and like just waiting for the person to play the next word. I'm Send me something I can proofread. I love it. Yeah. And yeah. I, I get this picture, and I'm looking it over, and I couldn't figure it out. But the error was, at the very bottom, they said it was this coming Wednesday. And at the top, it said July 26th. So the yep. actual copy in the ad said a month away. The event was actually that week, like two days from when they posted it. That's and, a and, you big know, error. How do you – and that's the thing. It's like yeah. if you don't put a second set of eyes on these things, I can understand how it could be missed. I'm not kidding you, Aaron. As I say this and tell this story, she just sent me a text that said, find the typo. I am not <laughs> kidding. That just came That's across funny. on the computer. <laughs> but but that, it, tells you how you know, often they, this stuff happens, too. It, exactly. I mean, look, in this industry, we've, we're all wearing several hats. You know, and We're all just trying to check the box and get something done. Yeah. And that's okay. Tell, I always tell my son, who uh, plays lacrosse, he's a goalie. And I'm always, I always tell him, I'm like, it's the same thing in marketing. It's like, as the goalie, your mistake is the one thing everybody sees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody else can make a mistake, but you're the one who has who has the public's eye. And when you make a mistake, everybody sees it, and everyone blames you or your team. Yeah. Whereas somebody who's in production or somebody who's in you know sales, they can write in a wrong order, or somebody who's they can make a lot of different things in the back end, but you're the one who's the public facing face of the company. So yep. even if you've got 6,000,
thousand things you have to do before you send something out. Just get a second set of eyes on it to make sure it's okay, and you will save yourself so many headaches. Um, you won't even know. Yes. No, I've, I've, I've been a big advocate of proofreading since day one. And that, you know, going back to that ad, I mean, that event could have probably, but I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but I'm sure just two little letters instead of saying mm-hmm. June, it said July, that probably cost them some business. Yeah. And, and I've done and, it before, you know, it's like sure, I said, we all have. coming in, coming in July and I'm like, don't you mean June? I was like, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. See, but that's what the second set of eyes does for you. Exactly right. She looks at it and it's like, oh yeah. Cause, cause you've looked at that copy 10, 15 times yep. and you're just numb to whatever exactly. it is. Somebody with fresh eyes looks at it. They're like, "Oh, this is wrong," you know. So, and, and one of the biggest—I mean, this, this this is how I look at whenever I write a longer form, like a blog post or, or some sort of feature. The second I finish my last thought, I just hit save and I walk away for at least a day. It's a smart idea. And yeah. I co- and I come back to it with fresh eyes to proofread because I know by that point my mind is usually so zoned out. I know I got what I needed out of my head onto piece onto my platform, but I can't proofread it now because I'm not going to pick up every error and my sentence structure is going to be different. Advertising could be the same way because, again, you're, you're putting copy out there that is potentially going to be seen by thousands and thousands of people. You want to make sure that it's representing your brand appropriately. Yes, and I'm sure now that we've had this podcast, some people will find a bunch of mistakes that I've made on our social media, but that's okay. <laughs> but, you know, it, it is what it is. But, I mean, you know, it, it – it, it is that that's it. I mean, I write most of my copy during the day. I write most do do most of my social media stuff in the morning when I'm fresh and I've had my cup of coffee, not when yeah. it's you know four thirty and I just I'm like, oh crap, I got to get home. I got to go get my kids and stuff like that. You're, you know, it's it's you're you're fresh, ready to go. You're, you're not kidding because now that you know that I've put myself out there as this grammar nerd, when I screw something up, oh man, do I hear about it? Yep, you do, and that's okay. Oh well. But it just exactly. it, it keeps me on point. So, so that's I right. That's right. So I do as I say, of... not as I do. Right there, you go. Well, Aaron, man, I want to thank you for coming on the show, sharing your knowledge. This has been great. I think we put a lot of good content out there for people to absorb. And Facebook advertising is something that I recommend to everybody. It is a pay-to-play platform where the organic side of things can definitely do tremendous things for your brand. So you can't ignore either side. But putting a good strategy together is something that's truly going to benefit your visibility and help your brand grow, as Monday Night Brewing has proven. So, Aaron, thank you for not only sending me some beer to consume while we talk today, but for sharing your knowledge on this topic. Anytime. Thanks for having me. I know we'll have some more episodes in the future. I'll definitely be reaching out to you, my friend, and uh, hope to have you back on the show. Anytime. Um, I'll I'll even send beer next time, too, so we get to go. I'm going to have you on Just as a bribe. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. there you go. thanks a lot there you Aaron go. appreciate it no absolutely no it was a lot of fun thank you so much you bet alright cheers alright that is it for session 26 of the Breaking Brews podcast once again a big thank you to Aaron Williams for coming on the show sharing his knowledge letting us know all about what they're doing at Monday Night Brewing how they are using Facebook to promote their business, to establish their brand identity. Lots of great tips, a lot of great pointers, and a lot of great strategies for you to take and implement into your own businesses today. Also, would like to once again thank Aaron for the care package that arrived prior to our recording session. Some great beers being brewed down at Monday Night Brewing. I got to sample a nice portion of the portfolio, and I've got some family down in Atlanta. I'm looking forward to getting down there again. And when I do, I'll make sure that Monday Night Brewing is on my priority list. When you travel that way, it should be on yours too. So let's look ahead. One week from today, session 27 of the Breaking Brews podcast will be dropping. Until then, you've got a whole week to catch up on some episodes that you may have missed. Jump back in the archives and do just that. You've got 25 other episodes in addition to today's to consume, to enjoy, to share, to rate and review, to really make your own. I aim to please here at the Breaking Brews Podcast. So next week, we're going to be talking about a very important aspect of your business that doesn't necessarily get a lot of talk, a lot of discussion, but it is a vital part to the operations of your business. We're going to be talking IT, and I'll be joined by Trey Bowden, who is an IT professional, 
Trey used to work with Dogfish Head for the better part of a decade, actually a little more than a decade, and recently just broke out on his own and he runs his own IT company. So he's going to give us some tips and some strategies that you guys can implement into the back end infrastructure of your business. We're going to dive into that. We're going to talk about some of Trey's time at Dogfish Head and talk about his experience in the beer world and ultimately how you can utilize what Trey does on a daily basis to make your business run more smoothly. So that's going to be session 27 of the Breaking Brews podcast next week. If you want to subscribe to the podcast, you absolutely can, and I highly recommend it. Jump over to iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or Google Play Music and download the show today. All show notes can be found at breakingbrews.com slash podcast. Also, forgot to mention this at the top of the show, jump over to Facebook and join the Breaking Brews Podcast Central Facebook group, doing videos, sharing information, and that's going to be the hub as season one of the Breaking Brews Podcast is reaching its conclusion after session 30. We'll be taking a brief hiatus until the fall, but the Breaking Brews Podcast Central Facebook group will be alive and well. You can also follow Breaking Brews on Twitter and Instagram. The handle is at Breaking Brews Co. Breaking Brews Co. Looking forward to wrapping with you guys on each and every platform that I have established for the podcast and for Breaking Brews as a whole. And we'll be back next week with Session 27 talking about IT with Trey Bowden. Session 27 is officially in the history books. As always, I'm your host, Jason Sircone. We'll see you next week. Until then, this has been the Word of the Port. <laughs>